Warning, The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to Cafe Savage. Uh, the phone number here is 855-407-282. As you can hear, my voice is a little shot. I have a strep throat, streptococcal bacteria have invaded my throat. I have a head cold, my feet hurt, my arms hurt. In other words, I have influenza. Now, a sane man would have called for uh, a fill-in host. But I am so committed to my audience and my show that although I need a doctor, I am the only doctor I trust in situations such as this. So I am saturated with various and sundry vitamins and herbs and Thai food. Let's see what else. I'll tell you a little later. And I feel well enough to do the show. Now, it's going to be a little subdued. I warn you. So come on in to Cafe Savage. Have a biscotti, a latte, uh, whatever they sell in cafes. And we can talk about the uh, news, views, and reviews of the day because, believe me, the character in the White House, the evil man in the White House, the enemy of America in the White House is working around the clock to destroy us. That's why I'm on the air today. <clears throat> you know what he's doing now? Palmyra in Syria just fell to the Islamo-fascists. They now control half of Syria because he undermined Assad. They're taking over the whole Middle East. This lying POS in the White House has the nerve to say it's not a setback. Not at all. They're rampaging through the world. Now it gets even better. He wants to bring in thousands of Muslims from Burma. Muslims who want to be, who the Burmese, <coughs> Burmese want to kick out because they're troublemakers. You heard me write it down and send it to George Soros personally, Federal Express. Listen to what I just said to you. Burma is a Muslim nation, 90% Muslim. They have a, uh, sorry, Buddhist. Burma is 90% Buddhist nation. They have a Muslim minority. The Muslim minority has been causing problems in Burma for a thousand years. They are now wanting to resettle the so-called Rohingya. You've got to listen to what Obama is doing, and there's only one reason he's doing it. He is overwhelming the nation with Muslim immigrants to weaken the Christian majority. These Rohingya cannot, <coughs> cannot work. They have multiple wives. They're unemployable. They'll be on welfare. They will wreck our schools. Why the hell is he allowed to do it? Listen to this idiot, Marie Barf. I think the Malaysians and the Indonesians have requested uh, some help resettling people. We're taking a careful look at the proposal. We're prepared to take a leading role uh, in any UNHCR organized multi-country effort to resettle the most vulnerable refugees. Here I note go. that more than a, a thousand more Rohingya vulnerable. have already been resettled. Turn it off. I can't take this idiot. If there were war crime trials, she'd be up on the docket along with Obama for what they're doing to this country. This is the last days of the United States playing out right in front of our eyes. Why would you bring in Muslims from Burma? Why would you bring in Muslims who are uneducated, can't work, multiple wives, unemployable, they're going to go on welfare, they're going to require schools and police and doctor care? Why would you bring them in unless you wanted to destroy the country? Answer, because he wants to destroy the country. Along with the vermin in the ACLU, are you ready for this one? The ACLU in El Paso, Texas, has renamed illegal immigrants international commuters. I'll repeat that again because nobody can believe this. On May 13th, dozens of members of the ACLU, the Anti-Christian Liberties Union, on the U.S. side of the Santa Fe Street border bridge in El Paso, were handing out pamphlets to illegal aliens who they refer to as international commuters from Mexico. Obama has destroyed America. He is going to destroy it so it's unrecognizable unless he is stopped. He is a thug. Obama is a criminal thug. Do you understand this? He is the thug. Who gives him the authority to do this to this country? Who? The invisible Republican Party and their mouthpieces in the media who keep talking about the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, George Washington and Ronald Reagan as though they're the Holy Grail. I don't need George Washington or Ronald Reagan to save me. Ronald Reagan opened the borders to Mexico, by the way, the great savior of the conservatives. Ronald Reagan granted amnesty to the illegals from Mexico. Never forget that. So don't go for that malarkey about how great Reagan was. But that's a, a subject for another day. You know, last night, 
after doing my show for three hours. I'm not complaining. I love it. This is the best three hours of the day. Uh, I took a rest, had dinner, blah, blah, blah. I did an, a show at night, uh, the Jim Bohannon show. He has a national show with 250 uh, uh, stations. I was on Jim's show with the other book. There are only two national hosts who've had me on their show, Laura Ingram and Jim Bohannon. The rest are part and parcel of the exact liberal cabal that hates real conservatives, hates Michael Savage in particular. And I've got to segue into something that's very important. As you well know, we live or, by by ra live or die by ratings in radio. We also live or die by bestseller lists in the publishing world. Well, we got the list of the New York Times list that came out last night for the first week of sales of Countdown to Mecca. And we were pretty sure it was going to make the top 15, or at least the top 20. Guess what happened? I have the, f the hard numbers here from BookScan. Anyone can verify this. My headline is this. New York Times buries Savage's Countdown to Mecca from bestseller list. In an astonishing breach of trust, the venerable New York Times refused to list Savage's novel, Countdown to Mecca, in the top 15 bestsellers, even though Savage's book outsold four books the Liberal Times pushed ahead of his. Numbers don't lie. I knew they were liars. Now I know they're thieves at the New York Times. If they can't even be counted upon to represent their bestseller list without bias, tell me what else you can count on the New York Times for doing. The hard numbers of this, my book sold 5,060 copies, which is not a big number. Nevertheless, there are books with 4,325. There are books with 2,025. There are books with 2,800. A book with 3,300 sales that have been listed in the top 20 and mine is excluded, kicked off the list. Why is that? There's only one answer. Because they hate my guts. Because the rats who work for Adolf Schulzberger's grandson, whatever his name is, Pinchy Sulzberger, are not to be trusted on any account. Am I bitter? I'm not bitter. It wouldn't change my life one way or the other. But it's another example of why you can't trust the New York Times. No, it's not all the news that's fit to print. It's all the liberal lies fit to print. That's topic number two. As Floridians are being displaced, Rubio demands more foreign workers. I'm not making this up. I told you I didn't like him. I knew he was a slime ball. I told you Rubio was a slimy creature from the swamps. This slimy liar, Rubio, is pushing a bill that would triple the number of guest workers businesses could hire every year. After hundreds of workers in his state were fired and literally replaced by foreign guest workers. Now, it's interesting you can't put two and two together as quickly as I. Who is it who backed Rubio last week? Raise your hands if you remember. It was a Silicon Valley trillionaire named Larry Ellison. And no one understood why Larry Ellison backed Rubio. Now you understand why Larry Ellison backed Rubio. He owns Oracle, doesn't he? What does Oracle want? Cheaper costs. How do you get cheaper costs? You fire American IT workers and you hire illegal aliens. So who does he go to? He goes to the pimp, Rubio. Did I tell you that they're nothing but front men for the power structure? Do you have any faith in Rubio or any, any one of the rest of them? No. Did you hear what happened in Disney, at Disney? Did you hear what happened in Southern California Edison? They fired hundreds of American tech workers, and Disney, that rat, Michael Eisner, that double-talking anti-American slime ball, Disney's company forced American technical, technical workers to train their foreign replacements who were flown in specifically to steal their jobs. That's what Michael Eisner did at Disney. That's what Rubio wants done in Florida. That's the Republican Party in the state of the world in which we live. So I've introduced a number of topics. The phone number here is 855-407-282. I can review the topics. I don't even remember all of them. But the numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. And although Countdown to Mecca sold 5,060 in hardcover and about 2,500 in iBooks, they did not list it in the top 20. And what's shocking about this is that number 16 sold 4,300. Number 17 sold 2,000. Uh, number 19 sold 2,800. Number 20 sold 3,300. Countdown to Mecca sold 5,060. The vermin at the New York Times refused to list it. They hate me. They hate my message. They hate Jack Hatfield. They are like the Soviets who want to disappear any 
person who disagrees with their liberal agenda. Should the United States play a leading role in absorbing Muslim refugees from Burma? Why would Obama overwhelm the nation with Muslim immigrants? There's only one answer. To further weaken the Christian majority who he hates down to his last strand of DNA. They will not work because they can't work. They don't speak the language. They'll never learn it. Many of them have multiple wives. It's part of their religion. They're unemployable. They'll be on welfare. They'll flood our schools with children who will require scarce educational resources to go for ESL, English as a second language. Then they'll force your daughter to take diversity training so she's not mad at them in the classroom. You want to talk about that? I'm going to talk about it. This is the Savage Nation. Now I'm going to give you a list of the things that I'm on. In order to fight the flu, here is what I'm on. The flu came on last night. Uh, after that show, I did another show last night after the show. And I, I think I'm a see my problem is I don't know my limits I actually think that I'm unlimited energy. I can do anything. This is a problem to be honest with you Many of us should know our limits at my age, but I don't know my limits So I keep going like there's no tomorrow because a doctor friend a cardiologist is a brilliant man Once said to me never let an old person live in your body, which is one of the greatest adages I've ever heard I see so many guys in their 50s saying, oh, you know, this hurts, and oh, my back hurts. Oh, this. So in other words, they're already acting out the role of the old man, and they, they, they go downhill very rapidly. I'm one of these people who refuse to act out that role. So, okay, so I go on the radio last night. I love the show on Jim Bohannon. I had tremendous energy. I felt good. I felt so good that after the show, I went out for a glass of red wine and some black olives and a piece of bread. That was my dinner. It was like a prison dinner, but I loved it. It was very Mediterranean. I said to myself, you know what, don't eat. Can't eat at this hour at 10 o'clock, 10.30. Glass of good Italian uh, wine, red wine, uh, some, some bread that they bake there, and some black olives. Had the wine, came home, went to sleep, woke up sick. Couldn't sleep all night. Post-nasal drip caused the strep throat. Then the legs hurt. Then the back hurts. Then the head hurts. So what did I do? Did I call the hospital? Did I call the doctors? I'll give you the savage regimen for the flu and a head cold, the minute I return right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. So now the maniac in the White House wants us to absorb Muslim refugees from Burma. The Buddhists in Burma know they're troublemakers. They don't want them there. That's why they're refugees. It's a primarily Buddhist nation. They've been at war with their Buddhist uh, neighbors for a long time. And now we hear from Human Rights Watch that the Muslims are discriminated against. So we're going to resettle Rohingya in the United States of America because Obama wants to do what? Does he, is, he, is he doing this because he wants to make America a better place or a different place? Is different necessarily better? To a liberal, they think different and diverse is better. They have not awakened to the damage they've done around the world. So I wake up sick, I told you that. I said, I don't know what to do. I'm going to go on the air no matter what. I mean, maybe if it doesn't get better by tomorrow, I won't. But So the first thing I did was, is I go to old Doc Vitamin C. I use crystals, and I mean crystals. I don't mean pills. I use a flat teaspoonful, which is four grams, in, uh, in water. Okay, that was the first thing. Didn't really do very much immediately because it takes, you know, at least a half a day of this to get on top of the virus. I then smashed down a lot of vitamin A in 15,000 IU uh, capsules. I took about five of them. This is not high dose. 75,000 IU is nothing. The toxic dose is probably 200,000 vit uh, in vitamin A. I don't recommend more than a certain minimal amount every day, but when I'm sick, I find vitamin A triggers a lot of immune reaction. Okay, what did I do next? I have a throat spray. It's a mixture of echinacea, golden seal, and propolis. That usually helps the back of the throat really tremendously. What did I do next? I drank an herbal tea, which is a tremendous mixture of uh, licorice root, slippery elm, uh, marshmallow root, wild cherry bark, and things like that. Herbs known to have been used in American and other uh, uh, folklores for treating sore throat. That helped, that soothed it. Then what did I do? I remembered my friend Henry, who's about 85 now, a World War II veteran, who told me that he was the guy, remember I told you about him? 
how he survived the uh, the uh, shelling, the artillery shelling by the Nazis, by cutting open the gut of a dead cow and crawling inside a dead cow's stomach. Not stomach, but the gut. He cut it open, climbed into the chest cavity, the cavity of a dead cow, covered with blood and entrails to survive the shrapnel. Can you believe this guy? And one of the nicest, quietest men you ever met. So I meet him years later, quiet, a non-assuming man. And he doesn't drink, by the way. <clears throat> I don't know how, after living through all that. He says, you know, I only put scotch in my mouth when I have a sore throat. He said, I don't drink it. He said, scotch will stop a sore throat immediately. I said, okay, how? He said, just put it in the back of the throat and keep it there and gargle it. So I got out the old uh, Glenlivet, put it in the back of my throat, spat it into the sink. Because the last thing I want to do is have a drink at this, <laughs> this time of day. Still nothing. I'm still sick, right? Next step, I took uh, the famous cure, the most famous cure ever invented for mankind, aspirin, the wonder drug, 325 mi milligrams. Still not feeling well. Went back to sleep. Sent the assistant out for hot Thai food. Specially prepared for Michael Savage. Extra hot red spices. Give me the lemongrass soup. Then I asked for curcumin or turmeric. She said, we don't have it. It's like a different region of Thailand or something. You know what? I feel better now. Not just from the Thai food. I think collectively, getting on the air, seeing the big problems in the world, remembering what Jews lived through in the Holocaust, which always helps me, by the way. Whenever I think I'm sick or I can't do this, I say, come on, come on, punk. I said, just get going. These guys lived through the Holocaust with flu, pneumonia, and they had to do slave labor. They didn't lay down and die. That usually gets me going. I kind of remember what ancestors had to live through. And whatever I have to live through is nothing. It's baby, it's baby crap, you know? I don't know if that's an illegal word. I may be uh, off base here. Anyway, the phone number is 855-407-282. It's a very sad day in America that this evil man in the White House can escape the consequences of his evil actions. This evil man had the nerve to say that them taking over Ramadi, the Islamo-fascists, taking over a city and killing thousands of people is nothing, he says, it's not really a setback, it's a quirk. But he didn't do it verbally, he did it through a press release. The lying sneak is hiding somewhere. The lying sneak only opens his big mouth when he has to talk about blacks and whites and how oppressed blacks are in America. That's when the lying sneak opens his fat trap. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. So the vermin, the throwbacks, the beasts, the animals, the subhumans and ISIS have taken another city. They're killing thousands of people. There's blood running in the streets. There's a humanitarian crisis of 40 to 60 to 80,000 people fleeing this Syrian city of uh, Palmyra right now. And Obama does nothing but lie about it, saying it's only a quirk, not a setback in his great war plans. No other nation on earth would permit this to go on. There'd be riots in the streets if this went on. Now, the only reason there are no riots in America over this lying crook in the White House, and I'm calling him names that were called of Nixon, so if you don't like it, it's payback. They called Nixon every name under the sun. This man makes Richard Nixon look like a saint. What this man's doing, at least we knew where Nixon was born, and we knew where his loyalties lie. But the fact of the matter is, this guy is wrecking the world. It's plain. It's clear. Anyone with a brain can see what he's doing. Domestically, internationally, nothing this man does is right. So you've got a refugee crisis. They're about to destroy archaeological sites a thousand years old. There's only one reason that America doesn't care, that you are apathetic. You know what that is? There's no draft. Because there's no draft, there's nothing in it for any of us. What do you care? It's some geek son from uh, across the Hudson River, some white cracker who's going to go over there and fight, right? That's how you think. Don't tell me I don't know how you think. What do I care? My son's not in the military. He married his boyfriend. That's all I care about. We're having a wedding for him up at the uh, museum. That's all. Let some geek uh, west of the Hudson. That's uh, Let them fight. Let some crack his son with a big cross go over there and fight. What do I care? My son's marrying his boyfriend in New York. That's all. That's what I, that's what I care about. I care about gay rights. I care about global warming. I care about cetaceans. You think I don't know the mind of America? I do. So I'm sitting here watching the world burning in front of my eyes. America becoming a third world cesspool in front of my eyes. And I say to myself, how far can I go every day? 
Just how far can I go in describing what I, an American citizen, the son of an immigrant, sees happening to my country under this evil man in the White House? There is no other word for him because any other man would see the damage he's doing. He's not stupid. He's not blind. He knows what he did in Baltimore. He knows that he encouraged the thugs after the fact by justifying it and saying the police were at fault and the poor thugs are oppressed blacks. He said that, for God's sakes. And what's the result in Baltimore? You haven't read about it in your local reg, huh? Well, here it is. Crime spike in Baltimore. Dramatic increase in homicides, shootings since riots. Asian American businesses targeted by the blacks in Baltimore. Why? Thank you, Barack Obama. Thanks, Eric Holder. Thanks, L Loretta Lynch. You're doing a great job, aren't you? That's what's going on. Now, if you go to my little website, michaelsavage.com, there's a story that you should also see. White female cop who should have been out on maternity leave, she had just given birth, got in a shootout and was shot dead by a black thug just hours before going on maternity leave. Scroll down. How about that horrible story of the quadruple murder in Virginia where an executive and his wife and 10-year-old son were tied to a chair, tortured with a knife, and then the house was set on fire. Arrest warrant issued for suspect in quadruple murder. There is an epidemic in America right now, an out-of-control epidemic of crime. And you can blame it on the character in the White House, Eric Holder, Al Sharpton. They, they triggered this. They told the police to stand down, and they told the thugs to do whatever they wanted. Okay? I'll go to the calls if you want. You want to talk about these topics? I'll talk about these topics. There's another one I didn't tell you about. Here's another one in San Francisco here. Elderly Chinese lady randomly attacked in San Francisco. The useless San Francisco Chronicle, the worth, most worthless rag in the United States of America. In history, there's never been anything worse than this. Mother's Day, old Chinese lady, 70 some odd years old, gets off a bus in Chinatown and she's assaulted. They won't show the picture or describe the, they won't even describe the, the, the assailant. But the police initially described the assailant as a black female who went up to this poor old Chinese woman and smacked her in the head. Now they're trying to find the assailant. Good luck. Police said three days after the assault, the woman's family found her unconscious at home. Her loved one, the loved one was taken to the hospital where she remained in critical condition on Wednesday. Severe assault now. Went up to her and beat her up because she was a Chinese. Did you hear what I said? You want to know what racism is? Look carefully. You'll find it real easy in this country. Real easy. She was on the 30 Stockton bus, which is known as the, oh, we have a name for it here in San Francisco, but there's no joking about this. She gets off the bus, and there's no motive. Woman comes up and beats her up, leaves her in critical condition in the hospital. Where's the outcry in the Chinese community? Asians are being targeted in, uh, in uh, Baltimore. You know why? There's great racism against Asians amongst a certain population here in America. But don't tell that to Barack Obama. Now, he's, he's interested in climate change at the uh, military academies. That's all. WSBA Radio, you'll be the first caller. What's on your mind? Yes, Michael, you're the only one that will touch these subjects. Uh, and this is why you have such a panoply of psyches that listen to your show. But there's uh, a reason I touch this subject, because Eric Holder said we'd be cowards not to. Didn't he say well, that we're a nation of cowards on race? So I don't want to be seen as a coward on race. I think it's very important to talk about race. You're certainly not a coward in any stretch of the imagination. But when I saw the fact that there was not even a peep from the White House, from the rest of the uh, mafia, uh, the, the Sharptons and, and, the, and the skirt, the AG's office, when this murder happened in Virginia, uh, it was like poo-pooed. And the only one out there that would say anything about it is Michael Savage. Uh, oh, everyone's showing his picture. Well, everyone's, show, oh, everyone's showing the picture of the thug who's on the loose, aren't they? But they don't comment after that. They'll show the picture. And, there he is. And he's got, let's see, he's got something tied around his head. Uh, yeah, there he is. Nice guy. Suspect wanted in four D.C. murders believed hiding in Brooklyn. There's a clear picture of him on Fox News. Any of the other shows is because you would upstage them. Uh, hey, a tragedy in Omaha. Officer killed hours before start of maternity leave. They show the, uh, the gentleman who uh, killed this female cop. Okay. Yeah, there's an epidemic right now of crime against 
Uh, there's an epidemic of crime in America right now because of Obama. I'll put it that way. Right, but don't you find his silence strange when the, when the shoe's on the other foot? No, I've seen it my whole life. I've seen the, the liars in the media. I've seen the thieves in the media who won't list my book in the top 15, even though it outsold five books uh, that are on the list. What do you expect? They're liars. They're thieves. I mean, I'm not crying about it. I'm telling you, I know how they operate. These are the people who are flooding America with illegal immigrants who will never adapt to this nation. These are people who are flooding America with criminals, rapists, murderers, child molesters, calling them all victims. These people are sick and they're running the country. Now, you would think the election of November would have had an effect upon the moron Republicans. You'd think a few of them would be screaming, stop it. But they're beholden, they're owned by the same corporate entities that own the other party, for God's sakes. <clears throat> what did I point out in the last beginning of the hour, which I think is so telling? They are maladroit morons, the Republican Party, as far as I'm concerned. They don't exist. They're non-existent. But look, here we had, we read that Rubio wants more H-1B visas for Florida. There's only one reason for that, because last week, Larry Ellison backed Rubio out of nowhere. He comes up with this idiot, Rubio, all of a sudden. No one knew why. What does Larry Ellison want? He wants more cheap labor for his IT workers. That's my opinion. So Rubio does his bidding. He's a front man, like all of them. They're just small-time, low-grade grifters, these, these politicians. What, because they give a speech on Fox News or CNN? Like they know what they're talking about. They read scripts written for them. So Ellison wanted something done. He went to the weakest of the Republican candidates who might win, who he figures is in favor of illegal immigration, and he gave him a little uh, a schmear job, telling him he's going to back him and gave him whatever money. And the next thing, the ice cream man, the moron, he's as qualified to be president as my dog Teddy is. My dog Teddy would make a better president than Rubio. I, I agree totally, and and well said by the son of an immigrant, as only you can do, Michael. He, uh, even when Thank you. you. That voice. Let me send you. I'm going to be giving out books all of this week and then stop at the end of Friday. Countdown to Mecca on the way to you. I shouldn't be here. I should be in bed sick with a thermometer in my mouth and a water. I feel better. What is wrong with me? How did I get better? Because the minute I do radio, take all of these remedies I took before the show for the, for the flu I was getting, I mean, I threw the kitchen sink at every possible organism that exists. I attacked bacteria, viruses, spirochetes. <laughs> I attacked fungi. I used every, every known remedy that is known to man except antibiotics, which, of course, would be crazy. I don't need them. It's the worst thing you can do when you have a flu, flu or a cold, but most of us know that by now because influenza is a viral illness. You certainly don't want to take an antibiotic. It'll only weaken your immune system and make you even sicker. So you use everything on that. I love the doctor said you go home and, and drink six glasses of water and get in bed. <laughs> That's American medicine in 2015. And doctor, should I take vitamin C? Oh, go on. You know that doesn't work. It won't hurt you. It won't hurt you. Yeah, you can take some of that crap. Yeah, sure. Right, they know what they're talking about. Look, when it comes to Western medicine, they're the greatest. I love it. And I've needed it, and it saved my life many times. But in the common areas like this, they don't know what they're talking about because they're owned by the drug companies. It's very hard to navigate through the confusion of our world, isn't it? Isn't it really hard to wake up every day? I know a lot of people say they can't do it. They don't want to do it. Intelligent people turn the other way. They don't want to hear this anymore. They figure it's finished, it's over, a gang took over the country, a criminal anti-Christian gang took over America, and they're going to destroy it no matter what we do. I don't give up yet. I'm waiting for the day that they take Obama out in handcuffs. I'm waiting for the day that finally he's arrested for crimes against America. Now, I realize it's just a fantasy and it won't happen because the other party is exactly the same. Except on fiscal matters, yeah, I get it, yeah. A little difference. Yeah, a little difference here and there. A few degrees of difference. Probably lower taxes for corporations. All right, that's good. Lower taxes for high earners. That's good. But other than that, tell me how the uh, other party differs. They don't exist. The drunk doesn't differ in any way. Boehner, the drunk, Mr. Klink. So we got a lot going on in the world today. Uh, so as I said to you last night, uh, after the show, took a break, then at 11 o'clock Eastern, 8 o'clock Pacific, lit up the mic on the I is the N, and I went on a national show, the Jim Bohannon Show. He's a great gentleman, old-style old broadcast. I love his voice. He's the only gentleman in the national media 
other than the gentlewoman, Laura Ingram, who has the guts and the integrity to have Michael Savage on their show whenever I have a new book out. The others are cowards and backstabbers and jealous, petty men. And I stand by those words, jealous, petty men who stand for nothing but themselves. Uh, these people had nothing to gain. They wanted a good intellectual conversation. Well, shall I say an intelligent conversation? And we had one. And I'm going to play little snippets of it when I come back, as well as do all the latest news, views, and reviews. Robert, can we play the little beginning of the Jim Bohannon show so they can get a taste of what I'm talking about? Let's our guest tonight needs little introduction to the world of the talk radio audience. He is Michael Savage, the very well-known syndicated uh, talk program host, in fact, right here on Westwood One these days. He's also noted for writing a number of best-selling non-fiction books, but you may not know that uh, Mr. Savage, Renaissance man, also is a novelist, and we're going to talk about his latest work in that regard in just a second here. Michael, thank you for coming back on. Jim, I love your introduction. Thanks for having me on. The music made me feel like Jerry Lewis was arriving any minute. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, tell me, uh, if you would, uh, about uh, what uh, drives you in all of these different directions. I mean, uh, certainly uh, a talk show job, a successful one such as you uh, most definitely have, would, would occupy your time. Clearly you have interests that go beyond that. Well, I do, but uh, here's the thing, Jim. I can only go so far in my, on my broadcast in saying things, and in nonfiction, you can do it in one way. Fiction permits you to do it in another way, and ultimately, I write political thrillers, as I did in Countdown to Mecca, and there are things I wanted to say that I dare not say on radio or in, even in nonfiction that I think you can fictionalize through the mouths of invented characters. But as, as a matter of fact, though, this is the last of these commercial novels. It's a, a trilogy. Uh, the, the Countdown of Mecca is the third and last of the series where Jack Hatfield is the character. He's a disgraced journalist. He was smeared, becomes a freelancer, and he's the hero. But uh, Abuse of Power was the first. A Time for War was the second. And this just out last week, Countdown of Mecca is the third and last in the trilogy. I'm not going to do any more for a number of reasons. They're exhausting. And there's a limit to how much anyone wants to do on Earth. And, and as you said earlier, frankly, a daily radio show is quite enough, as you, as you well know. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. So there's an epidemic of crime, an epidemic of killings, especially of police. And the most uh, prominent uh, case right now is this shock of a uh, home invasion. Mother, a father, a maid, and a 10-year-old tortured with knives and the house set on fire. So they find a, a pizza left over from the animal who did it to them, allegedly. And his DNA is traced to a, some police report because he's a known piece of garbage. And now, manhunt, suspect wanted in four murders, believed hiding in Brooklyn. I don't think they have to go that far. I mean, where could he be hiding? Probably, I'll give you four places. MSNBC Studios. I checked the studios, the green room. Uh, the White House. He could be trying out for a job in the Civil Rights Division. Let's see, uh, Al Sharpton's National Action Network headquarters to see if he can gin up a story as to why he had to tape the family to a chair, torture them, and set them on fire. Probably had something to do with some oppression, PTSD from all of the uh, oppression he suffered all of his life. Or where else might he be hiding? There might be another place you could look. I don't think it'd be that hard to find them. As key cities fall to ISIS, the Islamo-fascists, Obama is being told to overhaul his strategy. What does the uh, grand illusionist say? It's not a setback. No, no, it's just a quirk. 80,000 people are now displaced from his uh, strategy. You hear a strategy. The sorority doesn't know what they're doing. No strategy. And Michael Savage will say again over and over again until the most diehard Obama maniacs, listen to me, you had a parade of Toyota trucks that ISIS paraded the other night after taking Ramadi a half a mile long. There was not one American warplane in sight. One American warplane could have destroyed all of them. Why didn't Obama launch that plane? Why was there no highway of death? Seeing them roasted like cockroaches next to their burnt out trucks. There's only one conclusion. 
They're on our side. They're a product of America. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. I think the Malaysians and the Indonesians have requested uh, some help resettling people. We're taking a careful look at the proposal. We're prepared to take a leading role uh, in any UNHCR organized multi-country effort to resettle the most vulnerable refugees. I Liar. note that more than a, a thousand Rohingya have already been resettled to the U.S. so far this fiscal year. Uh, and we're also providing Burma. assistance. Uh, this year, we provided nearly 109 million Burma. humanitarian assistance you should be deported. for vulnerable Burmese. Shut uh, up! Shut up, chick mouth! That's the, one of the chief sorority girls for Obama, a woman who was a rolling disaster, both for the administration and for America's reputation. So now this criminal, and I believe she's a criminal, by she knows what she's doing. Is it not criminal to tell America that we should be taking in Muslim refugees at a time like this, while Islam is on the march in the Middle East? Islam is at war with neighbors around the world. Why would you bring in more Muslims? Why? Tell me the benefit of bringing in more Muslims. Yes, let's focus on Muslims. Why? What's the reason for it? Moreover, these are not educated people. The Rohingya that they want to flood America with from Burma are uh, amongst the lowest educated in Burma. They cannot work here. Many of them have multiple wives as part of their religion. Oh, yeah. Part of their religion is multiple wives. Now, when a Mormon did it, there were television shows, HBO documentaries. Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg went crazy when a Christian Mormon had multiple wives. But Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg haven't anything to say about multiple wives in the uh, Muslim community. Nothing. They're unemployable. They're going to clog the welfare rolls. The schools will be overflowing. Uh, do I need to go down the list? I don't think I do. I mean, any person can see this. How is this good for America? It isn't. So why would the grand illusionist be doing this to us? Why would the same man who was failing as an, a, a chair, whatever they call him, a commander-in-chief, I love it, an anti-war guy who never shot a BB gun, commander-in-chief, George Washington there, George Washington with a golf club. He's about to, to charge across Trenton to the next golf course. The great commander-in-chief, everything he said he did is fl blowing up in his face, but because of the New York Times, he gets away with it. So what can I say about it other than tell you what's going on? Executive amnesty for child molester. Yeah, big story. Big problem, big story. 855-407-282. And over in England, it's interesting, uh, immigration was a big issue in England. And unfortunately, the Conservative Party lost, the UKIP Party lost, and Cameron, who was a fake uh, Tory, very much like our Republican Party, Cameron's a complete double-talking fraud. A complete faker. He pledged action to curb migration numbers after the number of people entering Britain outstripped those leaving by 318,000. These latest figures from the Office of National Statistics are up over 100,000 in 2014 compared with 2013. And yet this very same liar, Cameron, promised no ifs, no buts to cut net migration, meaning the number of people entering the country minus the number leaving the country. But new uh, data shows that he's a complete liar. He's not stopped the dramatic fl flood of illegal aliens. Now, to his credit, Cameron wants to restrict benefits to EU migrants and crack down on illegal aliens. Anyone caught in the UK without the right to work will have their wages confiscated and be deported immediately without being allowed to appeal until they're in their home country. That's a good move. Wouldn't you love that in America? Wouldn't that be great if you woke up to a leader who said, Anyone caught in the United States without the right to work will have their wages confiscated and you'll be deported immediately. You won't be able to appeal until you're in their home country. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Do you know what this actually means? 
Somebody did the analysis. It means that 285,000 people came to work in the United Kingdom in one year alone, and they wrote, that is the city of the size of Nottingham, which has nearly 100 schools, 60 GP surgeries, and several hospitals. Britain needs to provide the equivalent just to keep up with the workers arriving, and this illustrates clearly the strain mass migration is putting on our public services. Why do we not hear such an argument in this country from the Republican Party? When have you last heard Rubio say that mass migration from Mexico and China is putting a strain on our public services? When has that fraud said that? Never. When has Cruz said that? So far as I know, never. When has Rand Paul said that? So far as I know, never. Apparently, the entire Republican Party is owned lock, stock, and barrel by the very same greedy corporate uh, entities, and not all corporations are greedy, the greedy corporate entities who want workers to work at a lower wage than, uh, to, than American workers. So that's a story from England on the Savage Nation. And meanwhile, they're bringing them in from Burma. Why? Why would they bring these Rohingya in here? Why would they bring them into America? We can't afford them. George on WABC has an idea. Go ahead, please. Michael, you spoke about Muslims coming in from Burma. Hillary Clinton last year visited Burma. Maybe the deal, she struck the deal to have these people come over here. I don't know. And I think you're pretty, you're pretty close to the truth here, because if you read the story about these Muslims from Burma that they want to flood into America, they do tie it back to uh, her visiting there and working something out there with the, uh, with the government. So uh, now here it is. This is this is what you're going to get from a Hillary Clinton presidency. But it would be here's the question: Would it be any different from Rubio? I don't think so. Well, Rubio just said exactly the same thing in essence because he was bought and sold by uh, Larry Ellison of uh, Oracle. That's what it looks like to me. Am I wrong in saying that thing? Is that an outrage to say a thing like that that he was bought and sold by Ellison? How else can you not put two and two together? Out of nowhere, this billionaire, trillionaire, Ellison, backs Rubio, an unknown man with virtually no standing, no intellect, nothing, no gravitas, to use an old word, nothing, no standing to be president, other than he's got a Hispanic last name, right? So why, would, why out of the blue would Ellison go to him? There's only one answer, in my opinion, because he struck a deal with him. I'll give you dollars. You come out in favor of more H-1B visas for Florida so I can have lower wages. Cut my costs, make more money. Is it? Doesn't that make sense to you? Am I wrong in my analysis, or is there something distorted in my thinking? No, you're not wrong. No, I'm not wrong. I'm really not wrong. See, I told you the best defense against the vermin who try to attack me, I mean the Salenterites who try to attack me, is the truth. My logic is flawless, so therefore you can't attack me. There's no other reason for Ellison to have backed this nobody. <laughs> How, I, you know, we have grandchildren, many of us listening to this show, have grandchildren. Can you please look ahead? Can you try to imagine the world of America and what it's going to look like in 20 or 30 years if these people are not stopped? Can you imagine what they're going to become in their own nation? Do you have any idea that your grandchildren will become minorities in their own country? They will be fighting Sharia law in their own country? They will have to fight every day of their life for survival. How is this even possible? Soaring immigration, soaring cultural displacement, the march of Islam. Your children's children will be outnumbered. And then you're going to have to accept the regime of the new majority, a Muslim regime. Your children's children will, will be marginalized and threatened. Your little girl will be a minority in your own country. And if you say that that's a good thing and that's a mark of diversity, then my friends, you're mentally ill. Take a look at the demographics and ask yourself, why would this anti-American president overwhelm the nation with immigrants, especially Muslim immigrants? There's only one answer, to weaken the Christian majority. There's no other explanation. These are not Einsteins coming in, the Rohingya. They're not all Einsteins with advanced degrees or $100,000 to start a business. The country is being invaded. You have an invader in the White House who's, let us say, making it easier. The lying snake oil, oil salesman in the White House is doing it. And his crew of trough sniffing metropolitan progressives called a sorority. I'll be right back on Michael Savage. 
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Here's another nice story. Here's an uplifting story that should make you all feel good. I don't want to be too negative today. The new president of the Boy Scouts, who's none other than Robert Gates, the former defense secretary, who was the worst defense secretary until this new guy, Carter, came along. A PC defense secretary is now the president of the Boy Scouts, and he called for lifting the ban on gay adults in the Boy Scouts. Robert Gates, former defense secretary, now president of the BSA, called for the organization to end its ban on gay adults in remarks at the organization's national business meeting today, Thursday. Robert Gates, the politically correct uh, uh, capon, said, quote, the social, political, and judicial changes taking place in our country regarding laws and sexual orientation, the status quo in our movement's membership standards cannot be sustained. Robert Gates added, our oath calls upon us to do our duty to God in our country. The country is changing, and we are increasingly at odds with the legal landscape at both the state and federal level. And as a movement, we find ourselves with a policy more than a few of our church sponsors reject, thus placing scouting between a boy and his church. I don't have to tell you what kind of churches are in favor of uh, gays and the Boy Scouts. Gates noted that the military's don't ask, don't tell policy was overturned in, in 2010. He said the decisions on the Boy Scouts policy could also be dictated by the courts, but it would be better to seize control of our own future. So there it is. Gates' statements were immediately met with praise from Scouts for Equality. A, uh, do I have to tell you who they are? Scouts for Equality? They're as much Boy Scouts as my dog is. Scouts for Equality. They're just front groups for the human rights campaign, the nation's largest gay, lesbians, transgendered, uh, ACDC, and foot power advocacy group uh, that you could ever imagine, saying it was a step in the right direction. See, only a step in the right direction. They're not through yet. Having adults as mentors for young boys or gay is a step in the right direction. I don't know what she means the right direction would be. Maybe it would be, uh, well, I, I can't go further than that. It's a national show. I can pretty much figure out when they'll be happy, when they'll decide that enough is enough, and finally we become equal. So Gates is a dedicated scout, and uh, he said that he's very happy that he wants uh, gays, gay adults in the Boy Scouts. That's what happens. And, and by the way, look at the job he got. He went from being defense secretary to the president of the Boy Scouts of America. Do you, do you have any idea what they pay him for that? you think it's done for free? The seamless transition from high office in the most corrupt government in American history into the private sector or libraries that are nothing but slush funds. In incomprehensible this would have happened in our lifetime. And it all starts with a little thing, you know, even, even Dwarf started small. There's an old movie by that title. Even Dwarf started small. So when corruption starts and the people say nothing because of apathy, the corruption grows. When morality starts to collapse in a nation and people say, what can I do about it? When you see guys like Harvey Weinstein or Sean Penn in the movie business producing vile entertainment of murder, mayhem, knifings, beatings, axes on people's heads, sexual license to the extent you could never imagine. And you say, well, look, I don't believe in censorship. I'm a good liberal. I, I, they can do it. I don't have to go to see it. There's no longer any movie codes, nothing. Everything is gone. The morality of the nation is gone. And once the morality of a nation goes, so goes the nation. Write that down, because you haven't heard it today, have you? Once the morality of a nation goes, so goes the nation. And that's the rest of the story. Let's go to the callers. Matt, Madeline on KSFO, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Yes. Uh, well, go ahead, speak. Of who was saving the poor Christian. All right, it's enough for that. What are we doing here with call screening? I, I, I call somebody, he's like, yes, uh, like she's vomiting on the air. Give her a barf bag instead of a telephone. 855 400 KBOI Radio. Tony, are you ready? 
Tawny, are you ready? Here we come. Go ahead, please. All right. So, yeah, um, I believe Obama is deliberately trying to destroy America, just like he's um, been involved with destroying the Middle East. They're trying to take down, well, if you're going to rebuild something or replace something, you have to send in the demolition. That's right. In other words, one of the tenets of Marxism, people say he's not a Marxist. Let me explain. One of the key tenets of Marxism is you have to, if you want to make an omelet, you've got to destroy, uh, break a few eggs. So he's breaking any egg he can that is Christian in dominance, whether in the Middle East or in America. He wants to remake a scrambled world in his image of a scrambled brain. Yeah, well, it's what the Muslims I, are I think that he is. I think he's a psychological basket case. I think he's one of these high-functioning maniacs. You know, the world is filled with high-functioning psychotics. Why is it not possible that we have a high-functioning psychotic in the White House? Well, yeah, he's, he's Muslim, and that's what they believe. They believe you have to create chaos. It doesn't matter whether he's Muslim. He hates America, in my opinion. He especially has a, a, an animus towards the Christian people, in my opinion. He is not defending the Christians in the Middle East. That's a fact that it's indisputable. He is not attacking ISIS in any significant way, which is why they're gaining wherever they go. That's a fact that's indisputable. So if you put all the pieces together, you can reasonably conclude something, can't you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I believe this is a war between good and evil, between Satan and the, and the real God, uh, God of the Bible. And, uh, you know, well, what is God doing? Why is God waiting? What's going on here? What's he watching the world burn before he does anything? I think God, you want to bring up God and watching and Satan and all that? Let's do it. Let's go for that one. I'd love to have that discussion. I've thought about it my whole life. How does God permit a school bus full of Christian children to, to go off a cliff and every, every Christian child dies on the bus? Where was God? How did God stand by while Jewish children were being tortured to death in front of their mothers and then, and then thrown into an oven? Where was God then? Well, God was always there, but we live in a fallen world where Satan right now is the king of this world, and his time is up, and he will pay for all the terrible things he's done throughout all of history. But well, I don't, I don't have that view of the world. I actually believe God has no effect on a moment-by-moment on a -moment basis and by a person-by-person -person basis. If I did, I'd have to not believe in God. I would believe, I would believe he's evil. If I were to believe for a minute that God controlled everything on earth, then I would have to believe that God is the most evil force the world has ever could, could ever create or imagine. Look at the evil on this planet. No, my friends, I believe God is not omnipotent. He is omnipresent. That saved me from atheism. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Now, what are the scouts for? I could see a gay teacher, a gay this, a gay that, no problem. But the scouts were a little different. In fact, they're a lot different. The Boy Scouts of America existed, because I'm a former Boy Scout, for quite another reason than for social engineering. It was to shape your son into a man, a man who would be a protector of himself, his future family, and his nation. That's what the Boy Scouts were created for. Not to be little tools of the, uh, of the uh, uh, agendaites. And that's one man's opinion. Joe on WABC, I think you think differently. Go ahead, please. Hello, Dr. Savage. Uh, I am a fire New York City police lieutenant. Uh, I have two grown sons, uh, one of whom, the younger of whom, went out to become an Eagle Scout. The older of whom uh, is gay, and he discovered his sexuality at about the time most people or kids or adolescents discovered their sexuality. 11% of the world's population, human population approximately, is gay. Wait, 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 what percent? Hold it, what percent? 11%. Nonsense. That's a made-up statistic. It's not 11%. That's total rubbish. Okay. At the most, it's 2%, and even that's a high number. Whatever, whatever it is, it is not a choice. Well, 11% is not 2%. I mean, it's a little different. I stand corrected. What I'm saying is, there is a percentage of the world's human population which is gay. And it is not a choice of so-called lifestyle. All right, I accept that. I accept that. And it's not evil. I accept that as well. I'm a sexual libertarian. That is quite different, though, than having a gay, t a gay scout leader for boys, developing boys, don't you think? L let me reverse it. If you really have sons and you really would have had a choice when they were youngsters going into the scouts and you were given the choice of them having a straight married morally straight up 
scout leader or a, let us say, morally fine but gay scout leader? Which would you have chosen? You would use the word morally as if being gay was immoral. Okay. No, I just said it. Didn't I just say? But and a mar. I said the choice was between a morally upstanding straight scout leader and a morally straight gay scout leader. Didn't I say that? The, the word morals should not. Enter. I just. You don't like the word morals. In other words, so you want all morality thrown out to make your son feel good. Is that it? My son and I are very moral people. Morality has nothing to do with one's sexuality. No, sexuality has to do with their morality. My son is. Well, I've heard that argument. I've heard that argument. So where does that end? Tell me where that argument ends. Let's put the word gay out of it, which is explosive. Where does the word morality end and begin with sexuality? Do you have any limitations on that? I do not. I'm asking you to... to well, we're saying, wait, so five people sleeping with a dog would be moral to you? I just asked you what is moral in sexuality. I said take the word gay out of the discussion. You said that gays have nothing to do with morality. I said, okay, fine, I'm a sexual libertarian. And I said, what are your limits, though, on sexuality? Where are your moral limits on sexual behavior? Are there any? That's what I'm asking you. Between humans consulting adult humans? No, there is no limit. What two there is no limit. So five people and a dog would be fine. That is bestiality. That is a perversion. That is All right, wait, wait. So, you, so wait a minute. So you do have limits, and you say there is a limit. And that limit would be at, at, at bestiality. Is that, is that tr fair or not? You're comparing apples and oranges. No, I, no I'm, I'm asking you to follow an argument. You just admitted that there are limits to sexuality in terms of morality. And your limit would be where bestiality enters the puzzle. Yes or no? I've heard this ridiculous argument against homosexuality. Uh, in other words, you're losing the argument because you could see the chessboard. And as a smart former cop, you already lost the game. So now you're starting to grumble and say that you don't like the game and you want to throw the pieces off the board. First, you said there is no morality in sexuality. I said there has to be. I said, would you accept five people and a, and a dog? You said you're mixing things up. I said, no, I'm not mixing things up. I'm asking if there's a limit in your concept of sexuality with regard to morality. And you said, yes, when bestiality enters the picture. I don't think that that's an unfair discussion. But that's not sexuality. That is, that is a mental, that is a perversion. It has nothing to do with human sexuality. That is perverse. Dude. Are you sure? Are you sure that that's perverse? There are probably groups that would disagree with you. Well, but of course, the, the people that have, like to lay with beef. But <laughs> I'm sure there are people who would say to you that people can be polysexual and sexual with animals, and there's nothing wrong with it if the animal's not injured. Well, they can argue that all they like, but they're wrong. Okay, that is... That is so I, a I understand that you have some morality in you. You're actually getting ang angry at the thought of it. Incredibly moral, moral person, as is my son. All right, wait a minute, hold on now. Do you realize there are people who feel the same way about homosexuality as you do, do feel about bestiality? Are you aware that they're not all evil people? Well aware of it. Of course I'm aware. I'm an extremely... And I'm more sensitive to it now, although I've always been, now that I have uh, one of my children is gay. But I've always... Okay, all right, well, hold it. This is a very good discussion. So the question becomes... Shouldn't those who find homosexuality morally reprehensible be entitled to know that their scout leader is gay? Well, it's none of anybody's business what my sexuality I was a scout leader. My sexuality is no one's business. It's nobody's business? Then why did Robert Gates just give a speech saying it's everybody's business? That I and, that, and, that should be gay, and there should be adult gays in the Boy Scouts. Is that our business? I don't, I don't think they should be excluded. I'll leave it at that. I, I just don't think one sexuality should not be a reason to exclude them from the military, from teaching, from leading scouts, whether they be a lesbian in the Girl Scouts or a homosexual man in the Boy Scouts, okay? And I'll tell you something else, too, which has always bothered me. There are women in Boy Scouts. They don't belong there. When I was a boy, it's the only women we saw was the, the deadly leaders and Cub Scouts. Well, then it was men teaching boys, older boys how to teach younger boys. That's what it's all about. It was women teaching boys how to do what? We were, we were Cub Scouts. There were den leaders. The den leader was a woman. Okay? Yeah. That was the end of women. We went into the Boy Scouts. That was the end of women. It was all men, okay, supervising because they don't teach. In, in Scouts, as you well know, men don't teach children. Men guide the older boys teaching the younger boys. That's what it's all about. That is what that, no, I do remember now that you mentioned it. There was a den mother. Now I remember way back when. Yes, there were den mothers. 
the outdoor life and civic uh, civil responsibility. I actually liked my den mother. I think I had fantasies for her. I think she was a very positive role model because at least I got to decide that I liked her. I mean, I had a, a desire for her. It was very good as a young boy. Understand? You would not have had one for my my Scott Lee. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have had it with a gay. I wouldn't have had it with a gay guy. I mean, at least when I was an impressionable eleven year old, I fell in love with my. Uh, my uh, the, the woman who ran the scouts. It wasn't a bad thing. I fell in love with many of my teachers when I was a little kid. Yes, and they are. Well, look, we don't have to get angry at each other to disagree over this. I think that we can both conclude that we have differing opinions on it. The fact of the matter is that millions of people have withdrawn their children from the Boy Scouts because of the socially liberal uh, policies, and I believe this will be a further bleeding of membership. And I hope we can leave it at that, and I hope you will accept a copy of my just-released novel, Countdown to Mecca. Now, at that juncture, I want to go to something. Uh, I don't know. This is a good topic. I don't know if we... I, we have to go to this topic. I, I think people are very excited over this. Uh, I really do. Mark on KSFO on the Boy Scouts, the gay Boy Scouts issue. Go ahead, please. Yes, uh, Michael. I am a leader. I'm an assistant scoutmaster. And I have gay friends. I have gay, gay associates and people I went to high school with that I keep in touch with on Facebook and things like that. And there's gay people within family. And anytime I try and have, you know, in a sense, corner them on their opinions about why they want to be married in the church and things like that, it all comes down to flat out every single time an attack on christian-based religion bingo that's right it's a communist agenda the whole thing most gay people don't really want to be married the majority of gays do not want to be married it's that they want it for financial reasons if they want it at all uh but the fact of the matter is <clears throat> this issue is an explosive issue and it has to do with an attack upon church teachings and morality itself they want the entire book of church teachings eliminated i think that's the opinion that i have come to as well I, I I completely agree with you, and it's exactly what it is. I'm uh, decently I can communicate very well. I've been a salesman for years, and I try and work nicely around these conversations I have with them. And every single time, they start to sweat and get nervous and get angry and nasty when it comes down to the actual answer of they want to see the church burn and anything that supports. Well, remember this: Th this leads to uh, a very bad conclusion. Because if all of the morality that the West is built upon is built upon the Old Testament, that's the Jews. And then the New Testament derived from the Old Testament through Jesus and his disciples or followers. Now, how do you get rid, if you're a gay radical, a gay activist, however you want to put it, and you want to normalize gay behavior and have everyone accept gay behavior as the norm, uh, not only normal, but possibly even superior to heterosexuals, which runs in some circles, by the way, how would you do it? Well, first of all, you have to purge the nation of the literature that gave them that false idea that gays are somehow wrong or different. And what is that literature? That literature is, is religious literature. Is that correct? So what you must do is purge the Bible and purge the teachings of the Bible and or rewrite the Bible so that the Bible no longer has any moral underpinnings. I think that that, that all follows. I think it's a logical conclusion. I don't know what's happened to people the way they think. It's so obvious to me since I was a young kid. I realized, looking at it now, I have a description that I was a conservative. And, you know, your stories of upbringing so mirror mine. And it takes me half a second when I hear something to see through the agenda. And there's agendas I agree with, and there's ones I don't. And I don't know what's happened to people. I don't understand why the gay movement couldn't leave the scouts alone. Why? Why did they have to go after the children? Why? Well, since, when, since when did so many gays want to suddenly be scouts? I, I want to know when that happened. When did so many gay people suddenly want to be Boy Scouts? When did that happen? They don't want to be. And listen, I know, I know I have directed, and I know I have had in my troops, you know, potentially gay children. And listen, I don't, I don't treat them any differently. There are expectations of everyone to follow the, the book it's simple. It, there's, it's not some magic. Right. I, I remember the Boy Scout oath. I can almost still repeat it, and it was probably 60 years ago that I took the Boy Scout oath. On my honor, 
I remember it to this day. It was drilled into me. Well, they want to, I guess, redrill it into me in another way. But you know what's in it? And what's in the oath is to do my best for God and country. That's Thank you. So now we have to take God out of the Boy Scout oath, I guess, because God is evil, because God demands moral uh, standards. Is that right? How many times can we turn our cheek before our head snaps, snaps off? I don't know. I don't turn my cheek. I take a risk every day by going on the urn and expressing my opinion. I'm taking a risk right now by not uh, bowing down to the great Satan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're, Thank you're you. What can I do? What can I do? We have Satan in the White House, and Satan is loose in the streets. Satan certainly exists in the media. I started my show telling you I have clear proof of the fact that Satan is loose in the media. They lie about everything. I don't have it in front of me anymore. I already moved on to another topic. And I'm going to say it again before we go to a break. My book came out last Tuesday. The New York Times list follows by a week the publication of books. We were waiting to see whether it would make the list. We found out that although my book, Countdown to Mecca, outsold at least four, if not five, one, two, three, four books on the top 20, my book was expunged from that list of the top 20, and books that sold in some cases less than half the number that's, that I sold made it on the list. So if you cannot trust the New York Times to publish an unbiased bestseller list, tell me what you can trust. Let's see Obama's success in uh, the Middle East. Let's see the fact that global warming is real and all scientists agree with it. Let's see that all Muslims are victims, and we must take as many of them in as we can. Let's see all cops are racist white pigs, and they need to be re-educated by Al Sharpton. Let's see all blacks are oppressed minorities, and no matter what they may do, there's an excuse for it. Let's see, what else can we trust the New York Times to tell us? I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Well, I'm feeling much better, I got to tell you something. And um, I, I, did, I threw everything at my, uh, my viruses. Uh, but the kitchen sink, I used all of what I've learned over the years in complementary medicine, and I seem to be fine. It doesn't mean, uh, you know, I'll be great later, but I feel better now. And, and there's, another, there's another element to illness and health, and you know what that is? Psychological. We all know that. Recovery uh, from any illness has a huge psychological component. And the minute I heard the downbeat to my show and went on the air, no matter how sick I felt with all I took, I asked the guys, I'm getting stronger and better through the show. I'm still a little, you know, my voice is a little off. So I just got an email from one of the gurus of the field, Richard Cunyon, M.D., K-U-N-I-N. He's an old friend of mine. He is the godfather, the last remaining genius in the field. And he wrote me a long email on what he would have told me to take, selenium, B12, B2, vitamin C, vitamin E, ginkgo, curcumin, milk thistle, betaine, glycine. And he goes on and on and why. And he said, I would have called in, but I don't have the time because I'm seeing patients. And thank you, Richard. I certainly understand all of these things, and I will look into it in great detail. It's the Savage Nation. If you care to talk about this issue or the issues we're talking about, the, phone, uh, the phones are open. We have not yet gotten around to what I really wanted to do at the beginning. Well, I did most of what I wanted to do. I, frankly, I'm very satisfied with the show thus far. My voice is a little off, but I feel great. And I think I've covered some new topics today that are not just mailing them in. This is not a mail-in show. So even when I'm sick, if I go on the air, I'm going to give you your money's worth. And I hope you've enjoyed listening so far. And the main question is, should the United States be absorbing Muslims from Burma and anywhere else at a time like this? Number two, should there be gay adult scout leaders in the Boy Scouts? Shall I give you number three, four, five, six, and seven? I will in the next hour. Be here or be nowhere. And would you please go to your bookstore and check out Countdown to Mecca? Thank you. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage.
Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to The Savage Nation. The world is melting down at every level. And while we are losing because of the liberal agenda everywhere on earth, whether it be the war against the most evil force since Hitler, if not more evil than Hitler, because make no mistake about it, if ISIS had the industrial capacity that the German people had, the gas chambers would have been turned on a long while ago. They are no different than Hitler. We are not only not winning the war, we have lost the war. We have lost the war because there are fellow travelers in this administration. There is no other explanation for it. That's number one. Everybody knows that Hitler should have been stopped at Munich. Everybody knows if Hitler had been stopped at Munich, 100 million people wouldn't have died in World War II. If you think that this ISIS cancer is not spreading in this country, I have another guest coming for you. And at the same time that the ISIS cancer is spreading in America because of the paralysis of this administration imposed upon the FBI and other intelligence services, the morality of the nation is being challenged on a daily basis. God himself is being kicked out and driven out of every institution in the United States of America. That kicks off our number two. I will call this the influenza show because, no, because I'm doing a good job. Who in the world would you know would go on the air with the flu other than me? Nobody. I think I'm doing a good job. My voice is a little off. I can hear it. I don't like the way it sounds, but I can still think um, I have no fever. So I'm going to use the adage later on. I've taken every known remedy that I've used for years, and it's working. I feel cheerful and strong. And uh, I, my voice is a little off, but I think I'm going to kick it pretty good by the time the, the show is over. And uh, there's an old adage from Adele Davis, starve a fever, feed a cold. And since I don't have a fever, I'm going to eat like a pig tonight. Probably spaghetti and meatballs and probably a half a loaf of bread, a plate of garlic and a bottle of red wine. And then I'll get back to you in the morning and let, and let you know how that worked out. <laughs> how that worked out. <laughs> Let's I mean, look at it. You look at foods like that. Everything in the thing I just mentioned to you is perfect for what I'm feeling. I need selenium. It's found in garlic. Anyway, I won't go into the details. We're talking about Boy Scouts, ISIS, uh, Obama flooding America with Muslim immigrants now from Burma. They have a new name now, Rohingya. And I was supposed to get, adapt to the Rohingya. Unbelievable to me. Let's take some of the callers. WMAL in Washington. John, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? Yeah, um, well, the, uh, the reason the liberals want to uh, go after the Boy Scouts is because they are trying to normalize homosexuality in society and they're not going to succeed on us older people i'm a i'm a soldier i'm a, a eagle scout they're not going to succeed on me but but by making it normal for the kids they will normalize it when they grow up uh and and they're Austria it will be normalized in the years to come and 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 this pattern is seen in nature i'm i'm studying the disappearing of the bees and the way that might attack the very young bees uh, and inject RNA into them that changes their their DNA. When they grow up, they have bees with uh, short wings that can't survive. And this is a base, this is a pattern I see. The liberals are going after young because they're easy targets, and uh, they will affect the outcome. They will change society this way. No, they have changed society, but look how smart <laughs> this group of activists are. They plant a guy like Robert Gates into the Defense Department who oversees the elimination of don't ask, don't tell in the military. And they promise him a great reward when he leaves the military. And they gave it to him by making sure he gets hired as the head of the Boy Scouts at over $1.6 million a year. And the first thing Robert Gates announces today is not how he's going to make the Scouts a better place, but a more gay-friendly place, and that adult gays should be permitted into the Boy Scouts as, as mentors and role models. If this is not an example of a conspiracy, I'd like to know what is. It's, it, it, it is a conspiracy uh, by, by nature. And, it, you know, the conspiracy, like you said earlier, is, is... Well, I think we should leave it at that because there's only so far I am willing to go in this battle. I have been cauterized. I've been attacked. 
I've almost been ruined by these radicals on every level, whether they be gay or otherwise, over the years. And I will repeat again, I am a sexual libertarian, and I've said a thousand times, and I'll say it again, I have no limitations with regard to what other people do with their sexuality. I don't care. As long as they leave the children alone. Well, guess what? Now they're not leaving the children alone. So I have to, I have to be consistent with my belief system. What do they expect me to do? I've said a hundred times I'm a sexual libertarian. I accept your gay lifestyle. Leave the children alone. Are they leaving the children alone now? The answer is no. They're not leaving the children alone. Thank you for the call. It's that simple. So, Chris KSFO, what do you have to say about the Boy Scouts and gay leaders? Hello, Dr. Savage. I'd love to say this. Uh, they need to keep their sexual teachings away from our children. Uh, they're like a rebellious teenager that got uh, caught in high school doing drugs, and now they're just acting out as adults. That's a really bad analogy. But I feel like they're, they're adults that have taken over in the politics, the same hippies from the 60s that didn't like being told they needed to comb their hair or get a job or wear a suit. And now they're in positions of power. And I remember a couple years back ago listening to you talking about certain people doing certain crimes in positions of power. And I almost feel like they're bleeding into the Boy Scouts now and everywhere else. That's all. Well, you Maybe see, I'm you have a choice. <clears throat> you have a choice, which is to take your children out of the Scouts, the Boy Scouts of America. There is an alternative group that is not as uh, morally ambiguous not as manipulated as the Boy Scouts of America. It is founded on moral principles based upon the Bible, biblical teachings, and they're growing by leaps and bounds. The Boy Scouts have bled over a million, a million young, youngsters because of these uh, movements to the radical left. So you have a choice. It's that simple. That's the uh, story, 855-400-7282. WABC, John, welcome to the Savage Nation. Go ahead, please. Dr. Savage, I believe in so much of what you say. I really do respect you and your, and, uh, and your ability to, uh, your willingness to go against the, uh, the thrust of, uh, of uh, the national movement, unfortunately. But I want to ask you, if you believe that God is omnipresent but not omnipotent, why do you think he has any ultimate power over Satan, who's also omnipresent? I guess this theological question is one best discussed over some theological wine that I don't think I can engage in right now. <clears throat> My simplistic conclusion is that if God really was capable of affecting our daily lives on a minute-by-minute -minute basis, first of all, it would eliminate the concept of freedom, of free choice, which I strongly believe in. I don't believe we're robots. I don't believe we're dictated by some serious forces from somewhere else. I think we have the power to make uh, our lives be what they are up to a great extent, to a great extent, especially in this country where we have ultimate freedom. This is not true in, in, in dictatorial nations, but in our nation, we have free choice, right? We agree with that? Certainly, but I also believe not only in our nation, but in the whole uh, span of human existence, I believe that God, uh, God has given us free choice. And that's why he has, he is, and, and also he is preeminent over Satan in the ultimate uh, uh, scheme of things. Well, why didn't he stop such horrible events as such as we're seeing right now in the Middle East where the Islamo-fascist, anti-God legions of hate are killing Christians, Yazidis, and other minorities, setting them afire a while they're alive? Where's God? Well, he's there, but we, we have been victims from the fall of creation uh, in, in the Garden of Eden, and, and uh, that's our choice, but we have to decide how we're going to respond to that. Right, and if we had a moral leader instead of the creature in the White House, he would have bombed them to the hellhole they came from. He would have sent them to heaven and let them enjoy the virgins they've been waiting for. What kind of president is this? They're raging through the Middle East, raping, kidnapping, murdering, enslaving little children, raping eight-year-old girls, and this... This grand illusionist does nothing, and he says it's not a setback? Do you believe a word that he's saying? You don't believe he's in cahoots with them? I don't disagree with you, sir. You know, I'm just, I, it, I'm terribly flummoxed by the fact that this guy who's in our White House has not supported American traditional values. Well, right, and it rages from the streets to ISIS, to the military, rather. That's right. But let's go back to the um, omnipotence, omnipresent issue of God. What do I mean by that? 
If you look at the terrible things that, ha that happened to good people, you can't say that God wanted it to happen to them. Would you, would you think he'd want a good person to suffer, such as a school bus of good Christian children falling off a cliff and all of them dying? You wouldn't say that's a godly thing, would you? Certainly not, but that all... All right, so what I'm saying is God doesn't control everything that happens on the earth. He's, he's there. He may control certain things at certain times. Or, ultimately, you have to come to the conclusion which is horrendous and horrible to say that God is indifferent, God is dead, or that God abandoned the earth. That maybe he gave up on his, crea his creation called man because of the horror that we've created on this earth. Maybe he just gave up on us a thousand years ago and said, you know what, kill each other. We don't even care anymore. I don't even care anymore. And he's gone on to another universe or another galaxy. How do I know? Not because this is all part of his total cosmic over, over the generations of mankind wherein he has allowed man to make his decisions and to suffer the consequences in his hope that they will turn away from their wayward, fallen state. Real, and do you see that happening in a country where Obama is enjoying more popularity than he's ever enjoyed? How is that even possible? Do they even know what they're uh, saluting when they salute the grand illusionist? Well, as much as I love America, I'm, 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 a, I'm a loyal, patriotic American, but even in, as, I, as I suffer at the, at the hands of this, of this guy who is now in, in control, I have to say that above him, God is in control and God allows things to happen. So why would God allow Obama to destroy this country? I can give you 15 different ways that he's destroying the country. Why does he allow it? What, does God hate America? Well, in the, in the big scheme of things, do you think America is that much separate from all of the other cultures that have come before us? Ah, uh, well, Obama doesn't. Well, I'm not talking about Obama. He's insignificant in the largest scheme of things. It's God who is watching over us. and, and, and has... he's, not, he's not doing too good a job in watching over us, is he? By permitting the grand illusionist to get into power and to continue to undermine the nation, I don't think God's doing too good a job as a watchman. Well, do you think he did, do you think he did well watching over the Jewish people in the Holocaust? No, he certainly didn't. And many Jews said that they threw God away after the Holocaust. I've had many Jews call me and tell me they threw their towers in the garbage after the Holocaust. It does not diminish who God is ultimately. I tell you what the Jews learned from the Holocaust. They learned to have a Bible in one hand and an Uzi in the other. Because as they were being thrown into the ovens, there was no one there to help them. They learned that they have to help themselves because no one will be there to help them. But Michael, you're not looking at the larger picture of, of what transpires uh, uh, physically on the earth and what God's plan is for mankind overall that's a big question i know the old saying the the uh, the saying written by thomas mann it was a short story which i quoted yesterday <clears throat> god sees the truth but waits i am tired of waiting for god i am tired of waiting for god i want him to come down and intervene right now and save me from the evil especially the evil of this evil administration, which if we do not stop them or God does not stop them, there will be no America left in the months to remain of this horrendous, terrible machine that is killing us all. I have to take a quick break. I'd love to discuss this further, but as you can hear, my voice is going again. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. We have terrible, terrible breaking news, terrible breaking news on the Savage Nation. A kangaroo court in Baltimore has indicted the six police officers in the death of Freddie Gray. That's right. Six police officers have been indicted in the death of Freddie Gray, according to the twisted sister, Baltimore City State's attorney, Marilyn Mosby, announced just now. All six officers were indicted by a kangaroo court and attorneys for the cops have called for this twisted sister, Mosby, to be taken off the case, obviously for her conflicts of interest, which are apparent to anyone except those in her own community. And that's the breaking news. And my voice is breaking up, as you can hear. I feel, <clears throat> I feel better, but my voice is worse. This is terrible. 
What's a talk show host without his voice? I'll start to sound like someone in radio uh, who sounds like this every day. And I don't want to sound like that. I mean, my voice is <laughs> really going. I started, it's terrible to listen to this. I don't want to inflict this upon you. But unfortunately, I have no control over this. I hope I'm better by tomorrow. But I have a very long weekend to do nothing except inhale uh, the Great Bay Air of the San Francisco Bay Area, eat good food and drink good wine, eat a lot of garlic, stuff myself with vitamins and herbs, and uh, see you after that. Anyway, what were we going to do? Oh, Obama on climate change. You've got to hear this. Here is the clown who is misleading America in every direction possible. The grand delusion as goes before the U.S. Coast Guard. And listen to what the wait while he's losing the war against ISIS because he's probably not fighting it for reasons only you can figure out. He goes before the Coast Guard and spits in their faces with this lie. Listen, if you see storm clouds gathering or dangerous shoals ahead. You don't sit back and do nothing. You take action to protect your ship, to keep your crew safe. Anything less is negligence. How poetic. It is a dereliction of duty. Wow. And so, too, with climate change. Wow. Denying it or refusing to deal with it endangers our national security. It undermines the readiness of off. our forces. Listen, the most grave danger to our national security is speaking in that sound clip. He is the enemy itself. I will remind you that nations have fallen before from the enemy within. This man walks op openly amongst us and in the most mellifluous tones spreads lies that are poisoning the body politic as sure as the viruses of cancer will poison a human being. It's the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Now, the maniac in the White House wants us to absorb Muslim refugees from Burma. The Buddhists in Burma know they're troublemakers. They don't want them there. That's why they're refugees. It's a primarily Buddhist nation. They've been at war with their Buddhist uh, neighbors for a long time. And now we hear from Human Rights Watch that the Muslims are discriminated against. So we're going to resettle Rohingya in the United States of America because Obama wants to do what? Does he is he is he doing this because he wants to make America a better place or a different place is different necessarily better to a liberal. They think different and diverse is better. They have not awakened to the damage they've done around the world. The character in the White House, the evil man in the White House, the enemy of America in the White House is working around the clock to destroy us. That's why I'm on the air. You know what he's doing now? Palmyra in Syria just fell to the Islamo-fascists. They now control half of Syria because he undermined Assad. They're taking over the whole Middle East. This lying POS in the White House has the nerve to say it's not a setback. Not at all. They're rampaging through the world. Now it gets even better. He wants to bring in thousands of Muslims from Burma. Muslims who want to be who the Burmese want to kick out because they're troublemakers. You heard me write it down and send it to George Soros personally, Federal Express. Listen to what I just said to you. Burma is 90% Buddhist nation. They have a Muslim minority. The Muslim minority has been causing problems in Burma for a thousand years. They are now wanting to resettle the so-called Rohingya. You've got to listen to what Obama is doing, and there's only one reason he's doing it. He is overwhelming the nation with Muslim immigrants to weaken the Christian majority. These Rohingya cannot work. They have multiple wives. They're unemployable. They'll be on welfare. They will wreck our schools. Why the hell is he allowed to do it? Listen to this idiot, Marie Barf. I think the Malaysians and the Indonesians have requested uh, some help resettling people. We're taking a careful look at the proposal. We're prepared to take a leading role uh, in any UNHCR organized multi-country effort to resettle the most vulnerable refugees. Here I note go. that more than a, a thousand more Rohingya vulnerable. have already been resettled. Turn it off. I can't take this idiot. If there were war crime trials, she'd be up on the docket along with Obama for what they're doing to this country. This is the last days of the United States playing out right in front of our eyes. Should the United States play a leading role in absorbing Muslim refugees from Burma? Why would Obama overwhelm the nation with Muslim immigrants? There's only one answer to further weaken the Christian majority who he hates down to his last strand of DNA. They will not work because they can't work. They don't speak the language. They'll never learn it. 
Many of them have multiple wives as part of their religion. They're unemployable. They'll be on welfare. They'll flood our schools with children who will require scarce educational resources to go for ESL, English as a second language. Then they'll force your daughter to take diversity training so she's not mad at them in the classroom. Why would you bring in Muslims from Burma? Why would you bring in Muslims who are uneducated, can't work, multiple wives, unemployable, they're going to go on welfare, they're going to require schools and police and doctor care. Why would you bring them in unless you wanted to destroy the country? Answer, because he wants to destroy the country. Along with the vermin in the ACLU, are you ready for this one? The ACLU in El Paso, Texas, has renamed illegal immigrants international commuters. I'll repeat that again, because nobody can believe this. On May 13th, Dozens of members of the ACLU, the Anti-Christian Liberties Union, on the U.S. side of the Santa Fe Street border bridge in El Paso, were handing out pamphlets to illegal aliens who they refer to as international commuters from Mexico. Obama has destroyed America. He is going to destroy it so it's unrecognizable unless he is stopped. He is a thug. Obama is a criminal thug. Do you understand this? He is the thug. Who gives him the authority to do this to this country? Who? The invisible Republican Party and their mouthpieces in the media who keep talking about the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, George Washington and Ronald Reagan as though they're the Holy Grail. I don't need George Washington or Ronald Reagan to save me. Ronald Reagan opened the borders to Mexico, by the way, the great savior of the conservatives. Ronald Reagan granted amnesty to the illegals from Mexico. Never forget that. So don't go for that malarkey about how great Reagan was. But that's a, a subject for another day. As Floridians are being displaced, Rubio demands more foreign workers. I'm not making this up. I told you I didn't like him. I knew he was a slime ball. I told you Rubio was a slimy creature from the swamps. This slimy liar, Rubio, is pushing a bill that would triple the number of guest workers businesses could hire every year. After hundreds of workers in his state were fired and literally replaced by foreign guest workers. Now, it's interesting you can't put two and two together as quickly as I. Who is it who backed Rubio last week? Raise your hands if you remember. It was a Silicon Valley trillionaire named Larry Ellison. And no one understood why Larry Ellison backed Rubio. Now you understand why Larry Ellison backed Rubio. He owns Oracle, doesn't he? What does Oracle want? Cheaper costs. How do you get cheaper costs? You fire American IT workers and you hire illegal aliens. So who does he go to? He goes to the pimp, Rubio. Did I tell you that they're nothing but front men for the power structure? Do you have any faith in Rubio or any, any one of the rest of them? No. Did you hear what happened at Disney? Did you hear what happened to Southern California Edison? They fired hundreds of American tech workers and Disney, that rat, Michael Eisner, that double-talking anti-American slime ball, Disney's company forced American technical workers to train their foreign replacements who were flown in specifically to steal their jobs. That's what Michael Eisner did at Disney. That's what Rubio wants done in Florida. That's the Republican Party in the state of the world in which we live. The subhumans in ISIS have taken another city. They're killing thousands of people. There's blood running in the streets. There's a humanitarian crisis of 40 to 60 to 80,000 people fleeing this Syrian city of uh, Palmyra right now. And Obama does nothing but lie about it, saying it's only a quirk, not a setback in his great war plans. No other nation on earth would permit this to go on. There'd be riots in the streets if this went on. Now, the only reason there are no riots in America over this lying crook in the White House. And I'm calling him names that were called of Nixon. So if you don't like it, it's payback. They called Nixon every name under the sun. This man makes Richard Nixon look like a saint, what this man's doing. At least we knew where Nixon was born, and we knew where his loyalties lie. But the fact of the matter is, this guy is wrecking the world. It's plain. It's clear. Anyone with a brain can see what he's doing. Domestically, internationally, nothing this man does is right. So you got a refugee crisis. They're about to destroy archaeological sites a thousand years old. There's only one reason that America doesn't care, that you are apathetic. You know what that is? There's no draft. Because there's no draft, there's nothing in it for any of us. What do you care? It's some geek son from uh, across the Hudson River, some white cracker who's going to go over there and fight, right? That's how you think. Don't tell me I don't know how you think. What do I care? 
My son's not in the military. He married his boyfriend. That's all I care about. We're having a wedding for him up at the uh, museum. That's all. Let some geek uh, west of the Hudson. That's uh, let them fight. Let some crack his son with a big cross go over there and fight. What do I care? My son's marrying his boyfriend in New York. That's all. That's what I. That's what I care about. I care about gay rights. I care about global warming. I care about cetaceans. You think I don't know the mind of America? I do. So I'm sitting here watching the world burning in front of my eyes. America becoming a third world cesspool in front of my eyes. And I say to myself, how far can I go every day? Just how far can I go in describing what I, an American citizen, the son of an immigrant, sees happening to my country under this evil man in the White House? There is no other word for him because any other man would see the damage he's doing. He's not stupid. He's not blind. He knows what he did in Baltimore. He knows that he encouraged the thugs after the fact by justifying it and saying the police were at fault and the poor thugs are oppressed blacks. He said that, for God's sakes. And what's the result in Baltimore? You haven't read about it in your local reg, huh? Well, here it is. Crime spike in Baltimore. Dramatic increase in homicides, shootings since riots. Asian American businesses targeted by the blacks in Baltimore. Why? Thank you, Barack Obama. Thanks, Eric Holder. Thanks, L Loretta Lynch. You're doing a great job, aren't you? That's what's going on. Now, if you go to my little website, michaelsavage.com, there's a story that you should also see. White female cop who should have been out on maternity leave. She had just given birth. Got in a shootout and was shot dead by a black thug just hours before going on maternity leave. Scroll down. How about that horrible story of the quadruple murder in Virginia where an executive and his wife and 10-year-old son were tied to a chair, tortured with a knife, and then the house was set on fire. Arrest warrant issued for suspect in quadruple murder. There is an epidemic in America right now, an out-of-control epidemic of crime. And you can blame it on the character in the White House, Eric Holder, Al Sharpton. They, they triggered this. They told the police to stand down, and they told the thugs to do whatever they wanted. Here's another one in San Francisco here. Elderly Chinese lady randomly attacked in San Francisco. The useless San Francisco Chronicle, the worth, most worthless rag in the United States of America. In history, there's never been anything worse than this. Mother's Day, old Chinese lady, 70-some-odd years old. Gets off a bus in Chinatown, and she's assaulted. They won't show the picture or describe the, they won't even describe the, the, the assailant. But the police initially described the assailant as a black female who went up to this poor old Chinese woman and smacked her in the head. Now they're trying to find the assailant. Good luck. Police said three days after the assault, the woman's family found her unconscious at home. Her loved one, the loved one was taken to the hospital where she remained in critical condition on Wednesday. Severe assault now. Went up to her and beat her up because she was a Chinese. Did you hear what I said? You want to know what racism is? Look carefully. You'll find it real easy in this country. Real easy. She was on the 30 Stockton bus, which is known as the... Oh, we have a name for it here in San Francisco, but there's no joking about this. She gets off the bus, and there's no motive. Woman comes up and beats her up. Leaves her in critical condition in the hospital. Where's the outcry in the Chinese community? Asians are being targeted in uh, in uh, Baltimore. You know why? There's great racism against Asians amongst a certain population here in America. But don't tell that to Barack Obama. Now, he's, he's interested in climate change at the uh, military academies. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I, Michael Savage, trust to buy my gold and silver from. I think the Malaysians and the Indonesians have requested uh, some help resettling people. We're taking a careful look at the proposal. We're prepared to take a leading role uh, in any UNHCR organized multi-country effort to resettle the most vulnerable refugees. I note here. that more than a, a thousand Rohingya have already been resettled to the U.S. You so far this fiscal year. And uh, we're also providing assistance. Uh, this year we provided nearly 109 million Burma. humanitarian assistance you should be deported. for vulnerable Burmese. Shut guys. up! Shut up, chick mouth! That's the, one of the chief sorority girls for Obama. A woman who was a rolling disaster 
both for the administration and for America's reputation. So now this criminal, and I believe she's a criminal, by she knows what she's doing. Is it not criminal to tell America that we should be taking in Muslim refugees at a time like this, while Islam is on the march in the Middle East, Islam is at war with neighbors around the world? Why would you bring in more Muslims? Why? Tell me the benefit of bringing in more Muslims. Yes, let's focus on Muslims. Why? What's the reason for it? Moreover, these are not educated people. The Rohingya that they want to flood America with from Burma are uh, amongst the lowest educated in Burma. They cannot work here. Many of them have multiple wives as part of their religion. Oh, yeah. Part of their religion is multiple wives. Now, when a Mormon did it, there were television shows, HBO documentaries. Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg went crazy when a Christian Mormon had multiple wives. But Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg haven't anything to say about multiple wives in the uh, Muslim community. Nothing. They're unemployable. They're going to clog the welfare rolls. The schools will be overflowing. Uh, do I need to go down the list? I don't think I do. I mean, any person can see this. How is this good for America? It isn't. So why would the grand illusionist be doing this to us? Why would the same man who is failing as an, a, a chair, whatever they call him, a commander-in-chief, I love it, an anti-war guy who never shot a BB gun, commander-in-chief, George Washington there, George Washington with a golf club. He's about to, to charge across Trenton to the next golf co course. The great commander-in-chief, everything he said he did is fl blowing up in his face, but because of the New York Times, he gets away with it. So what can I say about it other than tell you what's going on? Executive amnesty for child molester. Yeah, big story. Big problem, big story. 855-407-282. And over in England, it's interesting, uh, immigration was a big issue in England. And unfortunately, the conservative party lost, the UKIP party lost. And Cameron, who was a fake uh, Tory, very much like our Republican Party, Cameron's a complete double-talking fraud. A complete faker. He pledged action to curb migration numbers after the number of people entering Britain outstripped those leaving by 318,000. These latest figures from the Office of National Statistics are up over 100,000 in 2014 compared with 2013. And yet this very same liar, Cameron, promised no ifs, no buts to cut net migration, meaning the number of people entering the country minus the number leaving the country. But new uh, data shows that he's a complete lie. He's not stopped the dramatic fl flood of illegal aliens. Now, to his credit, Cameron wants to restrict benefits to EU migrants and crack down on illegal aliens. Anyone caught in the UK without the right to work will have their wages confiscated and be deported immediately without being allowed to appeal until they're in their home country. That's a good move. Wouldn't you love that in America? Wouldn't that be great if you woke up to a leader who said, Anyone caught in the United States without the right to work will have their wages confiscated and you'll be deported immediately. You won't be able to appeal until you're in their home country. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Do you know what this actually means? Somebody did the analysis. It means that 285,000 people came to work in the United Kingdom in one year alone. And they wrote, that is the city of the size of Nottingham which has nearly 100 schools, 60 GP surgeries, and several hospitals. Britain needs to provide the equivalent just to keep up with the workers arriving, and this illustrates clearly the strain mass migration is putting on our public services. Why do we not hear such an argument in this country from the Republican Party? When have you last heard Rubio say that mass migration from Mexico and China is putting a strain on our public services? When has that fraud said that? Never. Savage.